It seems like we've got a quarterback controversy in Ann Arbor as Davis Warren is benched after three interceptions. Two of them were just wild throws. I don't know the one uh, the Don seemed to miss uh, protection from the left side, and Davis Warren just kind of threw it out there like two did uh, on Thursday Night Football a few nights back. And Chris Rome didn't really commit to a quarterback in the postgame interview or the postgame press conference, so we will see what this week brings for this Michigan football team as they now face a top 15 opponent in USC. Go down in the comments. Give me a one-word reaction to yesterday's game. Mine is frustrating because they look good, right? 300 yards running the ball, so they look good at times, but it wasn't Diamond Edwards all that, right? Kyle Mullins, so maybe that's a good thing. But then, you know, Davis Warren, 11 for 14, but those three incompletions were interceptions. He gave up 14 points in uh, in the second, I guess 15 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, a lot of third down conversions on that first drive of the game for Arizona State. My one word is frustrating. It is the Michigan Football Report. Got a lot to say. Five overreactions from yesterday's 28-18 win over Arkansas State. Coming up right now. It is Sunday, and we are bringing you Michigan football overreaction Sunday. I'm going to go through the five biggest overreactions, maybe apt reactions, maybe proper reactions, um, from the fans, from social media, from the media after yesterday's Michigan win, which they looked sloppy. Really, the first and the fourth quarter really stunk. Um, there was probably some good play in the second and third quarter that we will talk about here on today's show. Number one overreaction from the people, from the internet, from the media, Davis Warren ain't him, right? The kids say he's him. Nobody's saying Davis Warren is him as of right now. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, 14 passes thrown for Davis Warren, right? 122, 122 yards, no touchdowns. Okay, okay. Those three incompletions were all intercepted. And some people are like, well, his arm got hit on one, and he was just trying to avoid the pass rush. Bad pass blocking. A lot of excuses being made. Did you see Sloppy Sam, said Jack? I tweeted out a screenshot that I saw going around. Oh, that's not that's not Davis Warren's fault. Right, the receiver wrong, ran the wrong route. That was the most uh, ob ob obnoxious take I saw all day, um, because that was probably the only one where Davis Warren wasn't really pressured. Just threw the ball to the actual receiver, threw it in triple coverage. I don't care where the wide receiver goes. You throw it in triple coverage, you are going to probably throw an inter interception if uh, unless you've just got a laser targeted pass, which that was not. Now, Alex Georgia came to the game and he threw four passes, but. What he's most known for is his running attack. Only three carries, but when he was in the game, um, Michigan really went to a uh, run-heavy offense uh, for the most part, right? So Warren gets uh, his bench after he throws an interception on Michigan's, I think, the first possession, maybe second possession in the second half. And that's the Alex Orgy show from there. Um, I don't know what this offense is going to look like if Alex Orgy is the starting quarterback because it seems to me the only pass he can really complete in a competitive game is is a rollout dump off going to his right side, right? Both his touchdowns, first drive in the opener against Fresno, the touchdown pass that he had in this game were pretty much the exact same play. This one to a tight end, and uh, the first one there to uh, to Diamond Edwards against Fresno. Now, I want to hear what you guys think on this one because I do not believe Sharon Moore is going to tell us until they try out the field, 3.30 on CBS against USC on Saturday, who will be this team's starting quarterback. So get down there in the comments. Who do you think it will be? Not who it should be. Who do you think it will be, right? Jack Tuttle was in uniform on Saturday. So give me an AO for Alex Orgy, a JT in the comments for Justin Timberlake, not James T. Yoder, uh, and Davis Warren, give me a DW. I'm going AO, Jack, instant reaction, just two letters. What do you got? Give me, give me JT. JT, Jack Tuttle for Jack. So nobody thinks it's going to be Davis Warren, who, by the way, looked pretty good. Outside of the three interceptions, right? Jack, you said look pretty good on that two-minute drill. the NFL two-minute drill. No, I mean, Davis Warren is literally the most frustrating part of this game for me because those three interceptions, two of the three, like you said, are bad. Yeah. They were bad. Bad decisions. What are you doing throwing in triple coverage? But the rest of the game, he looked Look good. good. Yeah. So it's so frustrating that he's making these mistakes. You can't trust him to make good – you can't trust him to always make good decisions, which lead into turnovers – but when he's on, he looks really good, so no it's very doubt. frustrating. No and look, you can't be a game manager type quarterback. They're not taking shots downfield at a high level with this guy. You can't be a game manager quarterback, which he seems to be able to do a good job at, and also have six interceptions through three games. So AOJT or DW, want to hear you guys think on this one. Next up, the overreaction, third down defense. And I was one of the biggest overreactors of this. I was just tweeting out the, the plays here. This was actually absurd. And I was, um, you know, throwing my hands up. 
in the first drive of this game. I'll talk about that in just one minute, but did want to tell you about today's presenting sponsor, and that is Game Time. It's the FIU's to take Jack to the national title game, took the fam to the Michigan-Texas game. One of those good money spent. The other one, eh, we had a good time, but Michigan didn't play their best. Game Time is a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the work out of buying tickets to events. With Michigan football here and Game 4 of the season at home coming up on Saturday against USC, Game Time is the perfect app for Wolverines fans. Because I love, look, the last-minute deals, you wait as close as you come to kickoff time, you can get better deals. All in pricing. You don't have to wait till you go to check out. Like, oh man, they added a bunch of fees like you have seen elsewhere. I know we've all dealt with that. Plus, views from your seat. I bought tickets to a big time sporting event uh, on another app. Right, directly there. I thought, oh man, these are great tickets, great tickets. I had a uh, foul pole in uh, you know a third of my vision, so it wasn't the greatest. I wish I would have had views from my seat. That's why I'm only using Game Time now for my tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. And use code chat sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code C H A T S P O R T S for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. So it's third down defense. Whew. Whew. They figured it out eventually, right? This team ultimately went seven of nineteen, and one of those I don't think really counts as a third down conversion because. Uh, it really only conver- converted because of a penalty, right? Six-year uh, Quentin Johnson, six-year senior starting safety. He got pulled after that, and I haven't really looked at the – I got really frustrated afternoon with yesterday afternoon with this team. Um, so I haven't seen all the snap counts or anything like that as we're filming this first thing on Sunday morning. But um, 7, 3rd and 8, 3rd and 15, 3rd and 20, they all ended up in completed third down conversions, one of them because of a penalty, late hit, out of bounds by Quentin Johnson. But look – this team, Arkansas State, was doing things on Michigan's defense that you would typically say, oh, that's Don Brown 2019. That's Don Brown 2020 when Michigan went 2-4. and four. USC is going to eat Michigan alive if they're able to convert third downs at that kind of clip, especially early on in the game. Now, this team scored 18 points that you see there on screen. Um, didn't really have any rushing yards throughout the game. Got a few late there. But those two touchdowns, 15 points, came on the last uh, two drives of the game. So it was really a 28-3 to game. You kind of felt okay at that point. You didn't really love the fact that the third down conversions happened. You didn't really, early on, you didn't really love the three interceptions. We were like, okay, we're going to win this game by 25 points. But people are saying on Twitter, oh, oh, they gave up those points against the second string, the third string, the fourth string defense. I'm like, look, the standard's the standard. If these guys are in the game, when you can't really move the ball on offense half the time, um, you put in your third string defenses. It didn't make really much sense. And the standard is the standard. And this is the defense that uh, that Wink Martindale has decided to run at Michigan. It doesn't look like the same defense they've run the last three years, right? His system, that that's why he was brought over. But nevertheless, um, I think this Michigan defense is in for a world of hurt if things stay the same as they face probably one of the most, uh, I guess, advanced passing attacks in all of college football coming up on Saturday. Next up, the running game exists. My third overreaction, Kalel Mullings over 150 yards. Breakout game for him. The Don broke a few tackles, right? He got up the outside, and Michigan runs for 301 yards in this game. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. Click that link. It's down in the comments. It's down in the description as we are marching towards 33,000 subscribers here on the channel. Send the link to a friend if you've already subscribed. Help us grow this season, as Michigan's going to have a lot closer games uh, this year than they've had over the last three years. So you're going to want to hear more of our takes. Take a look at the running back stats in this one. Don Edwards got more snaps, at least I believe. I haven't seen the snap count, but it seemed like it was. He got more carries. Didn't do as much with his carries. Now, it did seem to me that Edwards, on a lot of his runs, that guys like Giovanni El Hadi and Evan Link and Dominique Goodies were – just whiffing on blocks, and Edwards was getting hit two yards back in the backfield. 153 yards for Club Mullings, as we said. 10 yards per carry. He had a long 38, 39-yard rush in the first uh, part of the game. I think it was first quarter for a touchdown. Big game for him. And I think what a lot of people are saying, maybe this should have been their overreaction, is that Kalel Mullings should be running back one. And I don't disagree, right? Um, 
Michigan didn't really do anything on the ground, you know, of note against Texas. But in the two games where they did have some, you know, rushing attack, Kellen Mullings has looked like the better running back. Now, Diamond Edwards, we love our guy, Don. Um, we'll see what uh, what you know, comes of him. He's got USC, right? This is a USC defense that has looked much better in the two bowl games or two the games this year and in the bowl game last year after they got rid of their defensive coordinator, Alex Grinch, but over the guy whose name is uh, Anton Lynn or whatever from UCLA's uh, defense coordinator last year. They seem to have learned how to tackle. So that goes bad for the Don, probably better for Club Mullings, who can't break tackles. But I just think Michigan's uh, offense is still not using Diamond Edwards in ways that get him in space. Uh, ability to, he had that one, I think it was early on, second quarter, first quarter, where he kind of cut back to the left and you saw him get 10, 12 yards. Probably the best uh, you know play of the day for him, maybe other than his touchdown reception against Fresno, the best play of the season. Colson Loveland, Michigan's only real threat right now that's consistent on offense went down with an injury in the second quarter did not return um you know saw some uh, some good play out of some backup tight ends right had a couple catches out of tight end and another interception out of a tight end but if if Colson Loveland is hurt um I mean, oh no is the, the least we can say if he is hurt for a long time one you just feel terrible for him because you know he's a junior projected as a top 20 pick in the NFL draft um and it was weird. I didn't really know what his injury was. I haven't seen a ton of speculation. on Was he? He's kind of grabbing his arm, kind of went under, got a buckle underneath. So hopefully he didn't like you know break this bone right here, or gosh, even like a collarbone or something like that. Would hate to see it. Uh, but didn't return back. But I did like Michigan's tight end play without him. But if this is this is your best offensive weapon right now, maybe outside of the kicker, um, this is your best tight end. This is your best wide receiver as well. So like uh, he's not running the ball, but. For the most part, he's pretty much one of your only offensive weapons for a majority of time for Michigan this season. So I am hyper-tuned to anything we hear both publicly from Michigan, from Sean Moore, or anything behind the scenes that we can gain from some sources on whether he's in practice, whether he's got uh, you know, any slings or anything on his arm. We will let you know here on the Michigan Football Report, and that is why you subscribe. Number five, I, I, I agree with this overreaction, so I'm going to you know hand up. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with this, this group. The offensive line still stinks. Jack, you texted me sometime when the second quarter or something of like that. I was thinking the same thing. It was like all five offensive linemen missed their assignments. There was four or five guys in the backfield. I mean, give me your thoughts here, Jack. Offensive line expert. I mean, I mean, I mean it was <laughs> it was ridiculous. Davis Warren drops back for a pass. He has one second. I mean one second. And then you see five defenders in the backfield chasing him. I was like, I can't believe what i'm watching yeah. right now it was absolutely horrid and i mean even the deep the the running backs i mentioned earlier diamond edwards and the one interception just completely whiff left side guy blitzing in diamond edwards didn't pick him up but these two guys these were the surprise starters in the preseason into game one into game two into game three and greg crippen came in at one point in the game and he looked a hell of a lot better than dominique gudis did at center evan link is the worst pass blocker I've ever seen in my life. Every single time on that right tackle, Evan Link, redshirt freshman, uh, got the job. I, I just don't know what they're seeing, right? Um, Grant Newsom, Michigan's offensive line coach, he's he's in the hot seat right now. Not to get his fired, but you know the, the microscope is on you, Grant Newsom. You were a former player, great. You're an offensive lineman yourself. Your career was cut short by injury. You got in the staff as an analyst. You became tight ends coach, okay. But now you're the offensive line coach. That's a little bit higher. It's a little bit higher of a thing than tight ends coach. And this offensive line that Sharon Moore coached himself has been doing poorly. You are seeing these guys play. I don't care what they look like in practice. You're seeing them play. Dominic Goodies, he can't play as well as Greg Crippen. Why are we still doing it? I don't know. Evan Link, he cannot block for the life of him anytime Michigan passes the ball. You can't convince me that... There's, there's not even a reason that you shouldn't give other guys snaps when you snap the you, know, you snap the ball, you see Caduce getting beat, you see Evan Link all the time at pass block. Guys is taking advantage of him off that right side, uh, the right tackle position. And if it continues, I mean, this is just this is his coaching malpractice in a lot of ways. Sherome Moore knows what the offensive line looks like. He said in his press conference to go, he's focusing more on it. You don't want to coach the position that your head coach is most known for coaching when he was an assistant, right? Uh, and be doing poorly because then you get a lot of micromanaging, you get a lot of uh, extra attention, and it is deserved at this point because this team, if the defense is giving up third downs left and right, the only thing they could rely on is, hey, the offensive line has got to be able to move the football 
on the ground, protect the quarterback when we throw whatever, 20 or so times, maybe less per game. And right now, offensive line isn't getting it done. Dominic Gudis, Evan Link, I think there's got to be better players. This starting five offensive line is not getting it done for Michigan. We got a game this weekend. Michigan, USC. Um, look, Michigan hasn't beat, uh, I'm sorry to say, USC hasn't beat Michigan Jack in 18 years. I think that bodes well for Michigan at this point. 18 year streak of not beating Michigan for USC. Got to bode well for the Wolverines. But USC, right, this was like Michigan was a two and a half point favorite a couple weeks ago. And then it was like USC was a one point favorite last week, like in the early lines. After yesterday's game, six and a half point favorite for USC, and they didn't even play this game. Over under is 48 and a half. I want to know from you guys will Michigan beat USC on Saturday, 3 30 p.m. on CBS? Go down in the comments, just give me a yes or a no. That is all I want. Um, I'm going to go yes, Jack. Optimism Yoder, I'm going to go yes. Uh, I got a yes from Jack, too. Jack, give me a yes. I'm going to need some time to think about Jack's it. Jack's going to need some time to think about it. This team, though, is going to frustrate us all year long, right? There is no quarterback on this roster that's anywhere close to J.J. McCarthy. It's anywhere close to how even Wilton Spates or anybody like that. And so this team's going to frustrate us. Offensive line replacing five starters. Uh, the defense is not the same. And uh, not getting even the push up front of the defensive line, which is actually maybe the most surprising thing that we didn't even talk about today. But this team's going to frustrate us all season. So I think we're going to have a lot of these vent fests, even in wins like yesterday's game. But we'll be back on Monday with more Michigan Football Report. Until I see you guys, enjoy your Sunday. Go Blue.